Hey guys, Brandon Furches, LS4 King. New product video today. Everybody's been waiting for this one. I'm really excited to go over this with you. These are our long awaited tubular control arms. I have been working on these for the W body platform for quite some time now. We've had several revisions, really trying to make it the best possible product we could for the hardcore racing guys. It doesn't matter whether you're drag racing, road racing, Whatever you're doing with your W body, this is a product you're definitely going to want to consider that's been overlooked for a long time. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, this is laid on top of a factory OEM, um, you know, stamped steel control arm. W body control arms have one horizontal, one vertical bushing. This is a common failure point. A lot of people upgrade the control arms to the Mevotex that have a better bushing design. But ultimately, we still do see failures. Uh, bolt-in ball joint. It's actually riveted from the factory. Anytime you have to service your car, if you don't want to replace the entire control arm with an assembly like this, you would have to drill out those rivets, but these ball joints are serviceable and they are used in a bolt-in configuration. So what you're looking at here is kind of a, a makeshift fixture um, to just show how the footprint of my tubular arm compares to a production stamp steel unit. So what we have here is a one and five ace mild steel construction. We have a dual shear ball joint clevis with a machined insert to locate the tubes. Each tube end has been coped and we have custom machined inserts for three quarter 16 rod ends. And we have high offset uh, bushings that get used in conjunction with a heavy duty American made FK rod end. So I'm sure you guys have a ton of questions. Why would I want to switch to a tubular arm? What are the benefits? So a lot of people assume that it's weight. They assume, oh, go to a tubular control arm, shave a couple pounds of unsprung weight, um, you know, and it's going to help my car go faster, right? Well, okay, yes, wonderful. That is a partial benefit to the control arms, but that's not the entire story here. These control arms are super beneficial in stiffening the front of the vehicle, helping the car under launch conditions. By eliminating the two rubber bushings, that um, allow you to have flex in the front suspension and replacing them with spherical rod ends and offset bushings, you now have a much more stable footprint for that power that's transferring to the spindle. In addition to that, these things are super, super heavy duty. I mean, a stock arm, you know, they work. There's not a whole lot to them. You know, you can see in this configuration, it's not even fully welded all the way around. They did leave various seams. It's relatively thin stamped steel. Again, bushings that are prone to failure, but it gets the job done, right? I mean, when GM released the W body, it wasn't intended as a race car. It was intended to go to the store and get groceries for your mom and dad. Um, you know, it just happens to be that a bunch of uh, like-minded enthusiasts found it as an awesome cost-effective platform to get into the motorsports world and with motors that are attractive like the 3800 supercharged the ls4 um you know my personal favorite even some of the 39 stuff definitely has some um it, you know it, it's it's got some promise to it if somebody were to jump into that platform so again factory arm they weren't really considering max horsepower they weren't considering going out and setting records um and they certainly didn't want to use solid bushings because you would have all sorts of vibration that every person uh, who bought one of those cars brand new would complain about right so what makes my tubular arms different than some of the other offerings right um realistically there's only one other tubular control arm on the market um these are from my friends over at zzp um, they make a great product. It's just different than mine. There's nothing wrong with these. A um, little bit thinner tube diameter. They do maintain a poly bushing on the horizontal mount. You are required to use uh, their sway bar end links. They're designed for like the spherical bearing on the end with uh, traditional polyurethane bushings that will hook up to your stock bar in your W body application. Like my arms, they also have a double shear clevis that can reuse factory GM uh, ball joints. Now, I will point out a couple differences. Um, obviously, just by looking at them side by side, you can see uh, the footprint of my arm is a little bit more shallow. Um, 
in relation to the turning radius. One reason we did that is super high horsepower stuff. When you're running really big tires, we wanted to gain as much clearance as we could when you're full clock. I've been able to fit a 28105 on my Monte Carlo and still be able to clock the wheel uh, left or right with very little interference, just a minor adjustment to the pinch weld inside the wheel well. So that's um, one of the first things. Second thing is, um, you know, ZZP uh, used to sell a lot of these. I know there was a, you know, the inventory has been sporadic, like everybody, right? Um, so there's been a lot of demand for these, but I believe they just recently came back on the market. And um, that's great. These are really well suited for a street car. Um, if you're just trying to save a couple pounds, you want to firm up the ride a little bit, you totally can do that. These are a great piece. Um, in my opinion, if you're going full race car, you definitely want to consider my arms. Um, you know, again, I'm not knocking them. They just uh, went about their product different than I did. I'm, you know, I'm really pursuing max effort, guys that want to set records. You know, I want to see this W body platform get out of the tens and start sitting in the nines and, you know, even push it a little bit further to the eights. So I want to dive a little bit more into the construction on these. Our ball joint clevis. Every single piece of this arm is custom made with the exception of the rod end. Even our tube inserts are custom. The ball joint clevis is no exception. So what we have here is 3 16 plates, top and bottom, that have been precision machined. We have a tube insert with locators for the ball joint clevis so we can ensure that every single time one of these gets welded together, you will have the same exact precise location of the factory ball joint with slightly improved geometry. These steel plates actually uh, register into the tubes during the welding process, and even our tubes are precision machined. Nothing here is hand cut on these control arms. Everything is precision uh, machined from CAD files so that we can guarantee every arm is going to go on the vehicle the same exact way. So you can see with a little bit of offset, drops right in. This makes for um, some additional location of the ball joint clevis. It's now inboard of the tube, gives us a little bit more strength. So you don't have to worry about this thing shearing off um, in situations where, uh, you know, you hit a pothole. Um, or God forbid you clip a curb or something like that. These should hold up. I'm not saying you won't bend something. I doubt you will unless you clip a parking block at 80 miles an hour. But the point is, it's a very robust concept. Now, uh, I posted some pictures of these in the Facebook groups yesterday, and a couple guys caught that the end of the tubing was coped, and they asked why. They asked why we notch this tubing. I'll show you. So here we have a standard, traditional, um, you know, retail purchase tube insert. And normally, uh, this is actually a smaller diameter insert, but if you match it up with your tubing, you would flat cut the tube, you would go to drop the insert, it would ride on the register, and you would just perimeter weld this into the tube. Uh, you know, very much so like right here. You know, this is a traditional tube insert that was slid in and then perimeter welded. Now, one downside to that to that strategy is this is a suspension component, right? It's it, it's exposed to a lot of force, right? A lot of forces are introduced on the mounting points and the ball joint plate. Over time, welds can fail, product can fail, we can see cracks and things like that. By notching the tube and having custom inserts, we're hoping to alleviate part of that problem, right? Because when a crack starts, where is it gonna go? It's gonna follow the radius. However, when you notch the tube and the weld now changes direction, it covers more surface area of the insert, you are much, you know, you, it, it's very unlikely that you are going to crack that weld all the way around and have a failure, have the rod end pull out and have your control arm fall out of your car. So that's just one more piece that we put into this. It's one more step but it gives you some added security, um, you know, and you can rest assured that it's assembled correctly, it's welded properly, and, um, you know, this is not an area that you're going to have to worry about failure. So, in regards to why we notch the tubing, that's why. You can see how thick our uh, tube inserts are. You know, again, very heavy-duty pieces, you know, uh, 
protruding that far into the tube gives it some excellent leverage you know it's not like a fulcrum out here where there's potential to snap off you know this thing's buried inside the tube and then it's welded um you know every single weld we do on here we do two passes every single seam on these control arms gets two tig passes now these are mild steel construction 120 wall 15 ace od um you know again we already went over this but 316 shear plates machined inserts three quarter sixteenths uh, tube inserts for high offset fk rod ends and we also supply the bushings for when you mount this up into the subframe you know um if you're trying to go fast um these are a necessity the front suspension setup of the w bodies has always been um a point of concern for enthusiasts that are really chasing numbers. There's so much deflection in the design of the control arms. The factory struts have so much travel. That's why you need to, you know, make the transition to coilovers. Again, it's another great product that ZZP offers. But the whole front of the car needs to be looked at collectively. We came out with these because we realized that there really wasn't anything on the market to bridge the gap from OE to race car. Um, this gets us there. So. I hope you found this interesting. These are built to order. A full tubular set of the control arms runs for 800 with rod ends and offset bushings. They are reversible if you order them without the sway bar links. Now, where that is beneficial is if you're at the race car, racetrack and you have a set of these on your car and you wanna buy one arm so you have an extra, God forbid you put it into the wall, you're doing a lemons race or something and you need to switch out an arm track, track side, no problem. You now have an arm that is reversible and can go on both sides because typically, typically, guys who are racing W bodies are not using the factory sway bar um, to control body roll. They're using different tactics. Um, and in the drag race side of things, we do not run the front bar. I highly recommend against it. If you would like to use these for street duty, you do want to maintain a factory sway bar. That's not a problem. We can do a clevis style that will allow you to run a spherical rod end like this, or I can put a tab right on the bar so that you can run factory links, factory sway bar. It's just a $50 add-on. So, you know, again, great product. I'm really excited about this. I know you guys were waiting for all the technical specs and kind of how we did things, why we did things. So here it is. I hope this video was very useful and informative. If you have questions, please email me, brandon at ls4king.com. Alternatively, you can always put them in the comments like you guys normally do. Thanks so much.